Good morning to you. Welcome to Kingdom Shakers on Life 97.5 FM, where we chat with people, believers in Christ around the world, applying their gifts and fulfilling their purpose all in Jesus Christ. And today I'm so happy to share with Darlene Thompson. Darlene Thompson is the CEO of Darlene Thompson Enterprise, an apostle with her husband, Pastor Corey Thompson at By Faith Ministries. She has several giftings, one of the most recent of which is an author of the powerful book, The Covenant Keeper. She's also a speaker, dancer, real estate agent, upholsterer, interior designer, seamstress for dance apparel, flags, and a certified Christian counselor and a Texas Realty notary ready to serve you. Oh my goodness. And I'm sure that she has so much to share with us. Good morning to you, Darlene. Good morning. How are you doing today? I am doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. Thanks for this opportunity to come and be a part of what God is greatly just, uh, man, expounding you to do. So I'm, I'm just elated to have this amen. opportunity. Amen, amen, amen. God is awesome. God is awesome. So Darlene Thompson, my goodness, tell us about yourself. Tell us about the little girl, Darlene, how she was raised and what life was like. Wow. Okay. Well, huh. That little girl was raised, um, my mother and father, they got divorced when I was one. They broke up when I was seven. Um, my mother then began to have more children. And she had, when I turned eight, she had six kids, <laughs> two sets of twins and two singles. Mm -hmm. So I then had to be a very good helper um, to help her raise them, to bring them up. and that helped me to fulfill what God had shown me to be a leader, to go forth in what he was doing, because um, I guess you could say I was a shepherd at a very early age, <laughs> leading a bunch of sheep. I um, then grew up to, I was going to school to be a teacher and I chose not to do that um, because they changed the rules in teaching so much. And I just began to be a communicator. I um, got my license to be a radio host at the age of 18. Um, did not pursue that because I was married and my husband didn't want me to do that. So I had three kids, um, been married three times, not asking God for the first two. Mm -hmm. Then I began to pray and ask God for this, the third one. And we've been together for 19 years and Amen. we don't argue. We don't have we have disagreements but we learn to be each other's best friend to um dissolve our mm, disagreements and we are steadily going and, and and doing what god is calling us to do so my childhood taught me to be who god has called me to be today because you have to know how to go through trials and tribulations and thoughts and things that you know, people uh, disliking and uh, disapproving so that you may stand in the shoes that God has called you to stand in. When no one else is there, you're standing strong. And that's one of the mm -hmm. things that I've learned as being an apostle, that sometimes you have to stand alone, but you still have to stand on God's mandate and do what he's calling you to do. Come what may, you have Amen. to do it and be mm -hmm. willing to understand that it is what it is. So. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. me. Wow, that's amazing. That is amazing. Now, no, no. Do you remember your salvation experience and all that? At what point did you get saved, and what happened? I don't remember. You don't remember. Okay. I've been, I've been the one in my family um, that has always wanted God. Um, I remember at the age of, I believe, 11, 12, my mother got caught in the spirit realm, and I was the only one that was there that had enough faith in God to trust God to pray her out of it. And so I don't remember when I first got saved. I just remember trusting God all my life. You said that was at age 11? At age, age 11, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So what was life like for you at 11 years old? I mean, having, I mean, at 11, that's, that's still a young child. Uh, yes, but then have, you know, been your experience at that time to enable you to have the wisdom to know that this is what is happening and to know what to do. Were you at church? 
Were you reading the Bible? What happened? I was going to church with neighbors because my, 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 my mother wasn't saved at the time. Um, she was an alcoholic and um, my stepfather was a, um, an addict. And so I would run to church with whomever would allow me to go with them. I would go to church with whoever. And um, I just, I knew that Jesus was above everything else. And so while she was going through what she was going through, she would wake me up at night and telling me that the devil is in the, in the, um, the window. And he says that if this happened, he would do this. And, and he just threatened to kill my brothers and sisters. And all I knew was to leave Jesus. So I kept calling Jesus' name. And she said, he said, stop, stop, stop. You can't do that. Stop saying that name. And I said, but his name is above all names. Amen. And I kept... Wow proclaiming Jesus and, you know, praying, Jesus help, Jesus help. I didn't know scripture to pray the scripture, but I knew Jesus. So I just prayed his name and um, it helped us to get through that time. She stayed in there for about a week. And then after that, she went and she told my grandmother what was happening. And my grandmother wasn't saved at the time either. But when she told my grandmother what happened, it began to break and she came out of it. So mm. all I knew was wow. so I, I don't know my um the date that I mm -hmm. just said yes to Jesus. I've been there pretty much all my life. Right. So then at what point did you feel called to step out and just be all for him? Oh um I had my first preaching engagement at 17. Um, I believe it was at the age of 15, 16, about 16. I formally said, you know, the sinner's prayer and um, said that I, I wanted to be saved. But it was like a ritual to me. It wasn't like, you know, this was my turning point because I felt that I was already there. Um, but so at the age of 15, 16, and I started preaching at 17 and got married at 18. <laughs> um, by the time I was 20, my marriage failed and I got angry with God. And so I backslid. I backslid until I had, I divorced him and just jumped and married someone else because I had this thing in my mind and in my heart that I'm not going to hell for fornication. Mm -hmm. So I jumped and married someone else, even though God had already came to me and said, get him away from you. Wow. But I chose to marry him to try to make it right because I liked what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, I went through seven years of hell, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I waited until God told me it was time for me to release him. So um, some events happened, um, CPS got in my life concerning him and my children. And I was grateful that God said, now you can divorce him. And, and so CPS, yes. for those of us who are not in the States, CPS, Child Protection oh, Services? Yes, Child okay. Protection Services. <laughs> child <laughs> Protection Services got into my life concerning him and my daughters. Mm. Um, so I then had an opportunity to get away. Um, he was not found guilty of doing anything. Um, one of my daughters was acting up and she was angry with him for getting her in trouble. So she felt like that would be the easiest way to get him away. But it was God releasing me. Wow. And so when he gave me a release, I was grateful. Amen. And I said, I wouldn't do that again. And I began to pray. And um, so, so, so when you see, when you see people who are going through what it is that you would have gone through, um, because you, you now provide counseling, is yes. part of the counseling as well, um, counseling people who would have gone through similar experiences as you? Yes, yes. I counsel a lot of people that deal with marriages, or uh, in marriages, trying to get married, um, uh, dealing with teenage children, and uh, I deal with teenage children a lot. Um, explaining to them some of the things that 
could get them, the kids explained to them something that would get them in a place where they would regret some of the decisions that they make becoming an adult mm -hmm. and try to get them to learn God and explain to them, don't wait until you're my age to truly say yes, you know, don't get into a place where you're angry with him because of situations that has happened. Begin to embrace those, ask him why, and ask him what is the reason? Is it a lesson mm -hmm. or is it you're going through this for someone else? And learn from every experience that God is bringing you through, not to be angry about it, but to learn from it and take it in and be better because you went through that situation. So that's, that's one of the main things that I'm teaching the young, um, young people that are coming up, um, most of my dancers, how to embrace what you're going through and realize that it's not a punishment. It's not something that you should turn away from God, but it should draw you closer to God. Because in every situation that you go through, there is a testimony to come out of. And each time you do that, you're stronger and becoming more faithful to God. And God is being more faithful to you because you're learning from every experience. Amen. And so it helps them to um, grow in God. How, well, having gone through those two marriages, what are, what are lessons that you would have learned that you, I mean, you, you have a book, Fighting for the Covenant. Yes. Uh, Fighting for the Covenant, marriage is not as hard as we make it. What are two of the lessons that you can share with us having gone through those two previous marriages? The first one, I was very dominant and I was out of place. I was not in position. Um, I did not pray to God for this husband. I cho chose him to get away from my parents' home. Mm. So uh, make sure that it is the person that God has for you. Make sure that you're doing it according to God's will and not according to flesh and using a, a scapegoat for marriage. A lot of women get married for various reasons, for finance reasons, for help with their children, to get out of one situation into another and realizing that that's not the reason. But it should be because you're in a covenant with someone that God has orchestrated just for you. Um, and my second one was, oh God, um, make sure that you pray and you truly hear from God because you thinking that this person um, is decorated on the outside is the right one because they may be doing what you think that you would have them to do, but understand that a lot of times that is just a mask that they're displaying. And if you don't ask the Holy Spirit to remove the mask so that you may see behind them, then it could be something very different. And you will end up in a situation, an abusive situation that you should not have encountered because you didn't ask God. Mm -hmm. So my main thing is pray about it asking to make sure that it is um with this husband i asked for something tangible i went to i asked god to have him to call me on a certain day nice <laughs> you had a goodie on fleece yes yes <laughs> i did i did i need something tangible i need to make sure that this is you because i don't want to make the mistake again I want to be in your will. And my phone rang on that day. Ooh, amen. And so I said, okay, God, this is you. And then I got in position to prepare myself for marriage and a husband. Wow. So I, I like that you said that you got into position to prepare yourself. Oh my, that needs to be written down, darling. <laughs> To position to prepare yourself for marriage. Do you yes. do you find that a lot of women don't do this? Yes. Yes. I do. I do. You desire a mate, but you don't know the consequences of a husband. It takes a lot of things that it takes a mind change. Um, it takes you not having a single-mindedness 
but a a covenant minus. Um, when I say I got in position, I truly humbled myself before God. And I asked him, what is inside of me that I need to remove so that I may be able to receive the man that you have for me, the king that you have for me. Give me the mindset, teach me how to treat him as the king that he needs to be treated as. Amen. Show me through your eyes and not my own eyes. Let me see him in a place where you want him to be so that as I speak into him, I may birth out the things that you would have for him to do and where you would place him in the kingdom. Let me be that type of wife. I want to be the wife that this is the place and I am the one that's building him and behind him and pushing him to the place where you would have him to be. And so I had to change the mindset from a single mindset to a married mindset. I had to make sure that I'm doing the things in the home so that when he comes home, that my bosom will be his resting place mm -hmm. and that the house would be a place of comfort for him. We, we nice. tend to not think that we need to, uh, because we have changed to corporate women, we don't think that the home is the place where we need to make sure that the man is ready and able to come home because he needs to have a comfort place. Mm -hmm. The world is beating him up all day long. So when he comes through that door, you need to make sure that he's that he's in a place of comfort. Even if you have a corporate um, job, there has to be a time when you set aside time just for him, mm -hmm. set aside time to comfort him, to minister to him. And to sometimes, you know, you got to put yourself aside to say, no, God, I'm giving myself all to him tonight and let him know that he is your king. Mm -hmm. And as you begin to say, God, teach me, show me how to, to say the things that he needs to say. Show me how to pull out some of the things that he wasn't able to come out of him as a child. Show me how to change the language that was spoken to him as a child and i may be able to build him up in places where he was not built up because i learned i said god i need to know what it is that i'm missing mm -hmm. and the one thing that he said he says mothers and fathers raised them to be good men wow there's never wow. been a husband yes are, are, are these so, some of the principles you, you teach in your book, uh, The Covenant Keeper? Because, I mean, this is, this is really powerful stuff. This is, your, this is your more recent book, yes? Yes, ma'am. The Covenant Keeper is, is mainly, it's a workbook of scriptures that I, um, God compiled 31 scriptures. And in these scriptures, it has, it's, it's a workbook, devotional workbook. So I have the scriptures and then at the bottom, I explain what the scriptures are meaning. And then I ask the wife, are you do what part of this are you doing? And there's places for her to write. And then there's husband, what part of this are you doing? Because it is for us to not say, if they do this, then I'll do this, or I'm going to do this because of this. No, no, no. He's given us specific mandates personally. And in our own, it's, it's not according to what the other person does. But are you standing in line doing what you have to do? Mm -hmm. Are you standing in, in, in the right place for God to say, God, I'm doing everything that you've called me to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going through these scriptures. And I am validating all these scriptures to see what you are saying in these scriptures that I'm standing in place. I'm not holding them accountable for what I have to do and where you're taking me. And so it's, it's, it's just about how to dedicate your marriage to God and let him be the third strand to say, God, I'm doing these scriptures so that my marriage will be exactly what you would have it to be. So that's wow. the book in a nutshell and, you know, trying to help them not do what I did. Mm -hmm. how, how has the response been to the book so far? They, they've had good response. I, um, some said that they, it has been helpful to them. Um, it has made them reflect on themselves to see 
their shortcomings, what they're not doing. Um, it's a, it's, it's a book that even after a certain amount of time, you can come back and look at it again because we're ever evolving. So what part of this am I at now? What, how am I relating myself to these scriptures? Mm -hmm. Where have I gotten to? Because in marriage, you're evolving daily and you have to come back and, and sit with one another and decide, okay, where are you at? And where am I at? Even in, in, in amongst one another, um, because as we get older, our bodies change, our mindset change. So even in intimacy, are we in the same place? I had to explain to my husband, sweetheart, I'm going through menopause. So some of the times I may be a little edgy, but I'm not trying to be edgy. It's my hormones. Wow. And so I had to give him a lesson on menopause. So if he walked through the door and my head is spinning, don't take it personal. Right. It's my, my emotions. And I'm trying to get those straightened out. So it's, it's a lot of different things that we have to come along and explain to each other. So That's that when good. we get 30 and 40 years in marriage, we don't know each other because we haven't conversated. So, so communication is key. We, we see that over and over again. So the Covenant Keeper, oh my gosh, this sounds like such a powerful book. Now, now, now I, I would like to know though about Darlene, Apostle Darlene Thompson in terms of how do you balance everything you have to do? I mean, you're, you're so, you're a dancer, you're a speaker, you, you, you co passed with your husband. How, you're a mother of seven, you have grandchildren as well. How do you balance life? <laughs> I'm working on that. <laughs> I, I am truly working on that. At this present moment, um, I am now talking to a therapist to help me to line things up because I give out so much um, mm -hmm. of me until I was kind of getting off balance. And the Lord says, you need to be able to talk to someone that can help you. So now I'm talking to her and she's saying, okay, well, you know, how about this? How about that? And I'm learning to become more balanced because I would get thrown off, honestly, just like, okay, I got this to do. I got that to do. I have this to do. And now I'm learning to put them, put everything in perspective, mm -hmm. schedule things daily, line them up according to what's you know, what's most important, do a to-do list. And what I don't get through today, don't um, be angry with myself, but put it up for tomorrow morning mm -hmm. and begin to go on that to-do list. And as I check them off, then I realize that I'm accomplishing some of the things that I'm accomplishing and not put so much pressure on myself so that uh, I have to do it all at one time. So, it's, it's a balancing act, um, yes. walking on a tightrope yes. that, you know, you have to live by because I, I always look at the, 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 um, the, the person with the talents. God gave one, God gave two, God gave five. Mm -hmm. And then the person that did good with the five, he gave him five more. And I'm going, okay, God, you've given me these talents. And I understand that you put wealth in my hands to bring further talents. And the more talents I'm having, the more responsibility that I'm having. Because he said, to well, much, much is, is given, given, much is required. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so he's requiring so much of me. Mm -hmm. But I'm learning that just because he required me to do it, I don't have to do it with these hands. I can get a team. And so now I'm forming teams for the things that I have to do. Which, which so is, I, I, yes, which leads me to the question, you know, do you think people reach out enough? Because not just for marriage counseling, but you, you talk about going to a therapist as well. Do you think people reach out to people enough or they say, you know what, Father, give me wisdom and God is giving wisdom to go to Pastor John over there. But then they say, God, no, no, not that one, Lord. Give me wisdom. <laughs> exactly. People are yeah. reaching out enough. No, no, they're not. They don't. Um, 
we feel like that we're super women and super men and we can handle it on our own or we have too much pride and don't want to to know that i need help but when you realize that pride comes before the fall True. you know and a lot of times the fall is mental uh disruption yes so we have to put our pride down and say i need help can you direct me can you help me and and i I realized that asking for help is more mature than trying to do it all yourself. That's where maturity comes in. I'm mature enough to realize that I cannot do it myself, but if I get a team to help me do it, I can get a whole lot more accomplished. Mm -hmm. So I'm not mm -hmm. being less than because I need help. I'm being more than because not only am I um, getting help, I'm directing and teaching others how to do it. Mm, that's so cool. uh, it's, it's forming leadership in the midst of it. It's forming a, a kingdom camaraderie that we're doing God's business all together. And it's teaching us how that we can lean on each other's shoulder. And we have an Aaron and a her. All of us together have an Aaron and a her that will hold our arms up to be able to do God's business according to what God is saying. He told Moses, go get 71 people. I'm going to give you a spirit to 71 people. Now, if God is instructing Moses to go get help, mm -hmm. why do we go get help? That's He's true. telling us. That's Jesus true. had 12 disciples. Well, he had 72, and he had 12, and then he had three that he could give his most intimate conversations with. But he had help. That's good. So why do we feel like that we're a long ranger and we don't have to get help? Wow. Arlene Thompson, thank you so much. I feel like, you know, we could sit and, and talk for a long time, <laughs> you know. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for, for your insight and your wisdom and for sharing with us today. And I know that so many of the things that you've spoken about from both your books, um, Finding the Covenant and The Covenant Keeper, we can definitely apply. And, you know, I want to encourage those listening as well to, to where can they find your books and where can they connect with you? Um, my book is on Amazon, actually, or you can go to um, DarleneThompson.com um, and find the book there, and I'll be able to get the book out to whomever would desire the book. Um, I can be reached at DarleneThompson.com. You can email me at fightforyourcovenant at gmail.com, and I can respond. I do respond accept and engagements, just conversations. If anyone need help with their marriage, I do the best that God has called me to do to expound on where they are and where God is taking them. Um, so I'm there. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing with us here in Barbados and around the world, really, on Kingdom Shakers. And uh, we wish you all God's best, Darlene Thompson. Thank you so much. Uh, You're so welcome. Yes, ma'am. CEO of Darlene Thompson Enterprise, apostle with her husband, Pastor Corey Thompson at By Faith Ministries. Of course, she's also a speaker, dancer, real estate agent, upholsterer, interior designer, seamstress for dance apparel of flags, and a certified Christian counselor there in and a Texas realty, sorry, Texas realtor notary, ready to serve you. Thank you so much. And we wish you all God's best. And we look forward to what is next for you. Thank you so much. You be blessed. God bless. Thank you. God bless you.